showbiz from English migration of the Serbs is a set of four similar oil paintings by the Serbian artist Paha Ivanovic that depict Serbs, led by Archbishop Arseni Ye III, fleeing old Serbia during the Great Serb Migration of 1690-91. The first was commissioned in 1895 by Georgi Abrankovic, the Patriarch of Karlovci, to be displayed at the following year's Budapest Millennium Exhibition. In the view of the Serbian clergy, it would serve to legitimize Serb claims to religious autonomy and partial self-administration in Austria-Hungary by upholding the contention that Serbs left their homeland at the behest of the Holy Roman Emperor to protect the Habsburg monarchy's borders. Measuring 380 by 580 centimeters 150 by 230 in, the first painting was completed in 1896, and presented to Patriarch George Ye later that year. Dissatisfied, the Patriarch asked Yovanovic to adjust his work to conform with the Church's view of the migration. Though Yovanovic made the changes relatively quickly, he could not render them in time for the painting to be displayed in Budapest, and it therefore had to be unveiled at the Archbishop's Palace in Sremski Karlovci. Yovanovic went on to complete a total of four versions of the painting, three of which survive. The first version is on display at the Patriarchate Building of the Serbian Orthodox Church in Belgrade, the second at the Ponsevo Museum and the fourth at Princess Ljubica's residence, in Belgrade. Migration of the Serbs holds iconic status in Serbian popular culture, and several authors reputed to be one of Jovanovic's finest achievements. Background Great Serb Migration 1690-91 In 1689, Arseni Ye III, the Archbishop of Beck, incited Serbs in Kosovo, Macedonia and the Sansak to revolt against the Ottoman Empire and support a Habsburg incursion into the Balkans. On January 2, 1690, the Habsburgs and Serbs were defeated in battle at the Kakanik Gorge. The Habsburgs began to retreat, prompting thousands of Serb villagers to leave their homes and flee north fearing Ottoman reprisals. In Serbian historiography, this event came to be known as the Great Serb Migration. Between 30,000 and 40,000 Serb refugees streamed into Habsburg-held Vojvodina, north of the Danube River, and settled there. The migrants would come to call the regions they had formerly inhabited Old Serbia and dubbed their adopted homeland New Serbia. Tim Judah, a journalist specializing in the Balkans, describes the exodus as one of the most traumatic events in Serbian history. In 1691, Arseniye struck a deal with Leopold I, who was Holy Roman Emperor and King of Hungary, whereby the Habsburgs granted the Serbs ecclesiastic autonomy and some degree of self-administration, much to the displeasure of the Roman Catholic Church and Hungarian authorities. Leopold recognized Arsenije as the leader of Habsburg Serbs in both religious and secular affairs, and indicated that this power would be held by all future archbishops. In 1712, Sremski Karlovci became the Patriarchate for Serbs living in the Habsburg Empire. Commissioning In the early 1890s, Hungarian officials announced plans for a Budapest Millennium Exhibition to be held in 1896. It was intended to mark the 1000th anniversary of the Hungarian conquest of the Carpathian Basin reaffirm Hungary's national and territorial legitimacy and the Hungarian people's natural and historical right in the areas they inhabited. The exhibition was to be held at Budapest City Park. Exhibits were to be divided into 12 distinct areas, one of which was visual art. The showpiece of the art exhibit was The Conquest of the Carpathian Basin, a painting by Hungary's foremost history painter, Mihal Monkaksi that was located in the Hungarian Parliament building. Several pavilions displaying the cultural and industrial achievements of non-Hungarians living in the Hungarian-administered territories of Austria-Hungary were also built, including one for the Serbs. In the spring of 1895, on the orders of the Patriarch of Karlovci, George Yei, the Congress Board of Sremski Karlovci commissioned the young realist Paha Ivanovic to paint migration of the Serbs, intending for it to be displayed as part of the Serb pavilion. Georgie had originally approached the artist Toros Predic, but Predic said it would take him two years to complete the painting. Yovanovic assured the Patriarch that he could finish the work in eight months. The painting was one of two works that Yovanovic was hired to paint for the exhibition, the other being the Versac Triptych, which was commissioned by the Versac City Council. In the eyes of the clergy, migration of the Serbs would help legitimize Serb claims to religious autonomy and partial self-administration in Austria-Hungary. The official church narrative held that Leopold had requested that the Serbs of Kosovo, Macedonia and the Sansak settle along the Ottoman Habsburg frontier to create a buffer against further Ottoman encroachment, and church officials intended for Jovanovic's painting to reflect this view. Hence, the painting had significant political implications. Habsburg Serbs asserted that the agreement between Arsenije and Leopold legitimized their claim to the lands they inhabited. 
Croatian nationalists decried the Serbs as uninvited guests who only acquired Leopold's pledge of autonomy after they had migrated to the Habsburg lands. Migration of the Serbs was thus intended to challenge the historical and political narratives being forwarded by the Croatian and Hungarian painters whose works were also going to be displayed. Preparation The commission offered Jovanovic the opportunity to make a name for himself as a serious history painter. Given that the subject of the work was an event of international significance and the painting was to be displayed in a foreign capital. To ensure migration of the Serbs was historically accurate, Yovanovic studied authentic medieval weapons, costumes and other objects, later incorporating them into the composition. He also studied medieval histories, collected ethnographical evidence and consulted historians. Notably, the church asked the historian and orthodox priest Hilarion Ruvarak to consult Yovanovic on the historical details of the migration and accompany him on a visit to the monasteries of Fruskagora where the young artist examined a number of contemporary sources and objects from the time. The art historian Lillian Filipovich Robinson notes that Yovanovic incorporated modern techniques into the work and emulated the naturalistic approach of contemporary landscape painters, showing he was at ease with the art of the past and that of his own time. The composition marked a significant departure for Yovanovic, who up until that point had painted mostly Orientalist pieces as opposed to ones that depicted specific moments from Serbian history. History Original The original oil painting measures 380 by 580 centimeters 150 by 230 inches It depicts Arseniye leading tens of thousands of Serbs into exile, riding a horse and flanked by a Serb flag. Be in direct reference to the Bible, the image is reminiscent to that of Moses leading the chosen people out of Egypt. The irony, Judah notes, is that the patriarch is leading his people away from their promised land. The patriarch and four other figures dominate the composition staggering unevenly across the canvas as opposed to moving in a straight line. They punctuate the foreground, Filipovich Robinson writes, directing the eye through the diagonals and curves of their bodies and gesture to the next line of figures behind them. Each subsequent line leads to the next. All age groups are represented in the painting, and Yovanovic pays special attention to their facial details. Thousands of figures on horseback and on foot appear in the background before eventually receding into the horizon. The left background shows Serbian warriors pointing their lances at the sky while the right background shows lumber wagons carrying families into exile. At the right foreground, an old man herds his sheep. To the right of the patriarch, a mother and her infant son sit atop a horse carrying their belongings. The woman is the young wife of militia leader Jovan Monasterilija and the child his son. A mustachioed warrior walks before them with swords fastened to his belt and a rifle resting against his shoulder, striding purposefully into the future. The warrior's right arm is smeared with blood and bound by a white sling. C. Upon first seeing it, Georgie was displeased by Yovanovic's depiction of the Exodus, particularly the sight of sheep and wagons carrying women and children, saying it made the migrants look like rabble on the run. The source of the patriarch's displeasure lay in differing interpretations of what had originally caused the migration to take place. The church maintained that Arsenie was simply heeding the call of the Holy Roman Emperor to head north. Having studied Ruvarak's work, Yovanovic came to hold the view that fear of Ottoman persecution, rather than the desire to protect the Habsburg frontier, had prompted the migrants to leave their homes. Yovanovic duly took the painting back to his studio and altered it to the patriarch's liking, removing the sheep, lumber wagons, and the woman and her infant son, putting stylized warriors in their place. He also placed the letter Leopold had supposedly sent the Serbs inviting them to settle Vojvodina in the hand of Izije Dakovic, a priest riding beside Arsenije. Although these changes were made relatively quickly, Yovanovic could not render them in time for the painting to be displayed in Budapest. Hence, only the Versac triptych was displayed at the Millennium Exhibition. Migration of the Serbs was unveiled at the Archbishop's Palace in Sremski Karlovci in 1896. It was kept there until 1941, when Ustase fascists looted the palace and stole it, cut it out of its frame and took it to Zagreb, where it remained until the end of the war. After the war, the painting was returned to Serbia briefly put on display at Belgrade's National Museum, and then given back to the Serbian Orthodox Church. It was ultimately put on display at the Patriarchate Building in Belgrade, where it remains. It began undergoing restoration in 2004. Other versions While working on the copy that the Patriarch have commissioned, Yovanovic began a second version of the painting, one that retained the woman and her child, the herd of sheep and the wagons carrying refugees. This, Filipovich Robinson asserts, is indicative of Yovanovic's firmness of conviction and artistic integrity. The second version was smaller than the first, 
measuring 126 by 190 centimeters 50 by 75 inches like the first, it was completed in 1896, and came to be called the Ponsavo version as it was acquired by the Ponsavo Museum in the 1970s. Shortly after its completion, the rights to the Ponsavo version were purchased by Zagreb art collector Peter Nikolic, who secured the right to publish lithographic reproductions of the painting for the next 50 years. Such prints became quite popular, and could be found in Serb homes up to the end of the 20th century. As the Ponsavo version was the first to be lithographically reproduced, it became the best-known rendition. It was displayed at the 1900 Exposition Universelle World's Fair in Paris. At the height of World War II, Yevanova created a third version on behalf of a Belgrade physician named Darinka Smodlaka, who requested that the figure of Monasterilija's wife bear her likeness. D. This version measured 65.2 by 96.5 cm 25.7 by 38.0 inches. Its current whereabouts are unknown, and it is presumed lost. In 1945, as the war neared its end, a wealthy Serbian merchant named Milenko Kavik commissioned a fourth and final version, incorrectly assuming that the others had been destroyed in the fighting. Kavik gifted the painting to the Mandukic family at the war's end. They emigrated to the United States following the communist takeover of Yugoslavia in 1945, and took it with them to New York. This version was returned to Belgrade in 2009, and is currently on display at Princess Ljubica's residence. It measures 100 by 150 centimeters 39 by 59 inches. Reception and Legacy The painting was well received in Serbia and abroad, it has since attained iconic status in Serbian popular culture. An allusion to it is made in Amir Kusturica's 1995 film Underground, in which war refugees are depicted marching towards Belgrade in similar fashion, following the German bombing of the city in April 1941. Several authors have noted similarities between Ivanovic's depiction of the migration and images of other upheavals in Serbian history. Historian Katarina Todic observes that there are striking similarities between the painting and photographs of the Royal Serbian Army's retreat to the Adriatic coast during World War I. Juda remarks that the composition resembles images of the exodus of Krajina Serbs following Croatia's Operation Storm in August 1995. The journalist John Kifner describes migration of the Serbs as a Balkan equivalent to Washington crossing the Delaware, an instantly recognizable icon of the 500-year struggle against the Ottoman Turks. Professor David A. Norris, a historian specializing in Serbian culture, calls Jovanovic's approach highly effective, and writes how the stoic attitude of the priests, warriors and peasants reminds the viewer of the historical significance of the migration. He asserts that migration of the Serbs and similar paintings stimulated a revived collective memory among the new Serbian middle class, transforming folk memory into a more modern vehicle for the invention of a new national ideology based on the Serbian struggle for freedom from foreign domination. Art historian Michel Fakos describes the painting as a celebration of the Serbs' valiant effort to defend Christian Europe against the Ottoman Turks. The historian Noel Malcolm doubts the historical veracity of depictions of Arsenije leading vast columns of refugees, saying that there is no concrete evidence to confirm or deny that the number of migrants exceeded 40,000, as church leaders claimed. Filipovich Robinson ranks the painting among Yovanovic's three best works, alongside the Takova Uprising 1894 and the proclamation of Dusan's Law Codex 1900. This view is shared by the art historian Yelena Milichkovic Juric, as well as Judah. Filipovich Robinson praises Yovanovic's uncompromising realism and commends his portrayal of the migrants. She writes that the Ponsevo version validates Yovanovic as an insightful commentator on Balkan history, and is indicative of the methodology and technical skill which had already brought him international acclaim. Yovanovic persuades the viewer of the believability and authenticity of the event, she writes. He captures the determination, strength, and dignity of a people, regardless of the reasons for this migration they move forward in unison to meet the hard challenges of an unknown land.